Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to another bright new day on this Friday morning. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. begins with the opening sentence on page 32, continues on page 35. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We continue, and we pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate. Oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving 
and into his course with praise give thanks to him and bless his holy name for the Lord is good his love and mercy is forever his faithfulness throughout all generations glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever Amen we come now to this point where we have this opportunity to make ourselves right with God to bring before God those things of which our consciences are afraid and to ask for God's forgiveness. So now let us, in a moment of silence, open our hearts to Almighty God. And let us confess our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to the Psalms appointed for today. And these Psalms are two Psalms, Psalms 16 and 17, beginning on page 484. Let us recite the Psalms together. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 17. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous love and kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who assault me, my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed their heart to pity, and their mouths speak proud things. They press me hard. Now they surround me, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion greedy for its prey, and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them and bring them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand from those whose portion in life is this world. 
whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to their little ones. But at my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We will now have our reading, first reading from the book of Jeremiah. We are reading Jeremiah chapter 38, from verse 14 to verse 28. Jeremiah 38, 14 to 28. King Zedekiah sent for the prophet Jeremiah and received him at the third entrance of the temple of the Lord. The king said to Jeremiah, I have something to ask you. Do you not hide anything from me? Do not hide anything from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I tell you, you will put me to death. Will you not? And if I give you advice, you will not listen to me. So King Zedekiah swore an oath in secret to Jeremiah. As the Lord lives, who gave us our lives, I will not put you to death or hand you over to these men who seek your life. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If you will only surrender to the officials of the king of Babylon, then your life shall be spared and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you and your house shall live. But if you do not surrender to the officials of the king of Babylon, then this city shall be handed over to the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and you yourself shall not escape from their hand. King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Judeans who have deserted to the Chaldeans, for I might be handed over to them, and they would abuse me. Jeremiah said, that will not happen. Just obey the voice of the Lord in what I say to you, and it shall go well with you, and your life shall be spared. But if you are determined not to surrender, this is what the Lord has shown me, a vision of all the women remaining in the house of the king of Judah, being led out to the officials of the king of Babylon and saying, your trusted friends have seduced you and have overcome you. Now that your feet are stuck in the mud, they desert you. All your wives and your children shall be led out to the Chaldeans, and you yourself shall not escape from their hand, but shall be seized by the king of Babylon, and this city shall be burned with fire. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, do not let anyone else know of this conversation, or you will die. If the officials should hear that I have spoken with you, and they should come and say to you, just tell us what you said to the king. Do not conceal it from us, or we will put you to death. What did the king say to you? Then you shall say to them, I was presented my plea to the king not to send me back to the house of Jonathan to die there. All the officials did come to Jeremiah and questioned him, and he answered them in the very words the king had commanded. So they stopped questioning him, for the conversation had not been overheard. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard until the day that Jerusalem was taken. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. And now we continue with the canticle on page 54, the song of Christ's glory. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to our second reading, which is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. And we're reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Matthew 11, verses 1 to 6. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. And so we spend this time in reflection on this reading from Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. And we pray that God will inspire our thoughts and our hearts and minds as we reflect on this reading this afternoon. John the Baptist, of course, is in prison. He had been imprisoned by, by Herod because he had criticized Herod's marriage to his brother's wife you know, and, and condemned him for being an adulterer. So John was put in prison in this dark cell from this reading today. John heard in prison that it was what Jesus was doing, the Messiah was doing. He sent word to his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come? So John, what's happening here? John is in prison, in this dark prison all alone, John is wondering, has the Messiah really come? I mean, just think about it. John had experienced so much. You know, he was the one who had baptized Jesus and he would have experienced, you know. He himself was reluctant to baptize Jesus because he said to him, you are greater than I. And then the events at the baptism with the spirit and the crowd and the voice, you know, John had, had experienced all of that. And then, uh, later on, we remember um, when Jesus was passing by, John testified, you know, behold the Lamb of God. That is the Lamb of God you see going there. John testified to who Jesus was. And we remember again in John's Gospel there, John affirming that I must decrease and he must increase. So all of this came before. But now alone in this dark prison cell. John is kind of doubting. He's hearing some things. Yes, Jesus is doing things. But wasn't the Messiah supposed to come with power and with fire? You know, wasn't, the, wasn't there to be liberation and judgment and Israel's enemies to be routed and, and, and Israel vindicated? Was all that to happen, wasn't that part of what the Messiah was supposed to do? But John wasn't hearing about this kind of thing. In fact, he himself, who was the forerunner, that was his ministry, the forerunner to usher in this new kingdom that the Messiah had come to, to bring in. He was the one who laid the foundation for the Messiah to come in by calling people to repentance and readiness for the coming of the Messiah. And with all of that, um, John is in this dark prison cell and doubting. He's not hearing the kinds of things that he expected 
Remember, John was a fiery preacher, you know, and the kind of things that he was talking about in his preaching, you know, let's read some of the things that John himself was saying about. He says, you know, he says, um, for I tell you, he was speaking to these Sadducees and Pharisees, you know, who were, we you know, were quite hypocritical. He says, who told you to come here, you Buddha vipers? Who warned you? <laughs> you know, he said, even now the ax is lying at the root of the tree, you know. Even now, the kind of urgency he's talking about. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit will be cut down. That speaks of judgment, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, in that chapter 3 of, of, of Matthew's Gospel, Matthew records some of the other things that um, John was saying, calling people to repentance and, and, and talking about the immediacy, the urgency of this repentance. Because, you know, when the Messiah would, would come, when the Messiah arrived, it would be a time of judgment. And that was the message that John was emphasizing, you know. Um, so, John, you know, was perhaps, you know, thinking of the Messiah, like most of Israel, in a certain kind of way. A Messiah who's route, who would rout Israel's enemies, bring justice, you know, rout, you know, conquer the, the enemies and set them up as a powerful nation, restore them, those who had gone astray into the right relationship with God, you know, and really um, just show his might and his power in, in routing his enemies and vindicating his people. But instead, instead of that, um, John was saying some other things, you know, and so he sent his message disciples, some of them, you know, go and ask, you know, what, exactly what's going on. Are you the one to come? Or are we to wait for another? Because John, you know, couldn't rationalize this kind of Messiah. He wasn't doing some of the things that everybody, all of Israel expected, even John himself. Despite all that John had experienced at Jesus' baptism and so on, this doubt in that dark prison cell, in that lonely dark cell, there were these doubts. He wasn't there to see for himself. He wasn't there to ask questions. And so the doubts were taking hold. And Jesus didn't give any direct answer. Interesting, eh? No direct answer. He, he just pointed them to some of the things he was doing. And in effect, what he was doing was sending John, you know, a message, and essentially saying, essentially saying, so you have your doubts, eh? Well, listen, what about this? He says, go tell, tell, tell John what you, what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. All of those are actually, what Jesus was doing is actually pointing John to the scriptures. Go back to the scriptures and you read them over and see what they say. And so, you know, we, these, these particular, we can actually find these, all of these being referred to by the, by the prophet Isaiah in particular, Isaiah 26. You know, we can actually look back at, at these um, passages and see uh, what, what they talk about. And, as a, Isaiah 26 verse 19, we take a quick look at that, what does it say? It says, your dead shall live. Your dead shall live. Jesus is saying, you know, yes, you see, the dead are raised. Go back to your scriptures and you'll see what it says, you know. Similarly, um, you know, the blind receive their sight. Go back to the scriptures. We can find that as well, you know. We can, uh, Isaiah 35 is one uh, particular uh, chapter that, that, that really says a lot. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf won't stop. The lame shall leap like a deer. The tongue of the speechless shall, you know, shall sing for joy. So Jesus is simply saying, go back to the scriptures, John, you know. And you read it all over again. You know, send him right back to reflect on what the scriptures actually said. Even Isaiah 61, which is a passage, part of a passage that Jesus himself quoted when he, remember when he went to his home synagogue, as Mark recalls in his chapter 4 of his gospel. 
Jesus quoted, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. So Jesus is saying to him, you go back, you see good news being brought to the poor. That's part of what um, I'm supposed to do. Bring good news to the oppressed and so on. And we could find in the scriptures where of course the Messiah would come with power and there would be judgment and their judgment will come. And that's all brought out in the terrible day of the Lord in, in, in Malachi chapter 3. So, so John was, part of his ministry was pointing to that part of judgment. But indeed what Jesus was trying to say is yes, the judgment will come. But as for now, I have come to bring the good news to the poor. To declare, you know, that the kingdom of God has come to bring healing, you know, all the signs of, of my messiahship. Yes, indeed. And the good news, of course, um, of Jesus was that we must repent, just as John himself said, repent be and believe. And Jesus invited us all to enter into the kingdom of God, which he, by his coming, had brought into being, had initiated. So we had that invitation to repent and to come into life into the kingdom. And this was the phase, the first phase, if you want, of Jesus' um, ministry, Jesus' work. And humankind, thanks be to God, we all know even at this time, up to this day, in these last days, as the book of Hebrews will put it, we have that opportunity, that opportunity to repent, believe, and come into that kingdom life, put our lives under God's reign. And so, at the end of the ages, as God has given humankind time, we all have that opportunity to turn our lives and judgment will come. And in that time, we will have, you know, all that scripture uh, predicts that comes to judgment. A day that scripture talks about weeping and gnashing of teeth. A day when those who did not in their time, we in our time, find, you know, Find the time to listen to the word, to go back to the scriptures as it were, and read, reflect, to repent and believe, and enter the, that kingdom life. All those of us who haven't done that will indeed now reap the judgment. So may we, my brothers and sisters in Christ, remember Jesus when John had his doubts, sent him back to the scriptures to, to assure himself. May we really be rooted in the scriptures and may we have understanding, may God, you know, touch our hearts and our minds and help us to come to this point where we truly repent and believe and live this life, make that decision to live life in the kingdom. So at the end, when judgment will really come, we will be among those who will be called into the everlasting kingdom and not among those who will be cast into the outer and utter darkness. The Lord be with you. And so we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers that our Savior has taught us. Our oh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue in prayer. O God, our Father, you've bidden light to shine out of darkness, and have awakened us again to praise your goodness 
and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives being open to your glory, we may shine as lights in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We continue in prayer as we pray the collect for today. We turn to page 179 for the collect for proper 23. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue in prayer. Today we thank God for the gift of his holy word. We pray that as we return to God's word, we will always be reassured in, you know, in, in our difficult times when doubt seems to enter into the picture and we need that reassurance of God's word. May we always be rooted in that word and that word will strengthen us and give us courage and hope to continue onward on this journey, this kingdom journey in which we are embarked. Today we pray for Christians everywhere. We pray for the life that we live, that we will indeed be lights in the world and make God's love known as we reach out to others who are in various kinds of need. Today we pray for God's church worldwide, for all ministers of God's word, all those who are leaders, in God's church, in the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, who is head of the Anglican Communion worldwide. In our own province, we pray for the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, who is Archbishop of the Church in the province of the West Indies. We pray for all our bishops in our several dioceses, especially we pray for our own Bishop Claude. May God continue to bless our bishops especially our own Bishop Claude, give them health and strength and wisdom and grace and power so that they would be able to lead their churches in the way that we ought to go. We pray for the church in our own diocese, for all our priests in all our parishes, and we ask for God's continued blessings upon us. So we pray for the church in our own diocese. We pray for all the priests in our various parishes and all our people. And we pray especially for God's guidance and inspiration as we continue to work in the different parts of this country of ours to reach out to God's people and to really make a difference in their lives. Today we pray for those who are secular leaders, those whom God has put in charge of an authority over us to make our laws to pass measures that will make for good and remember Colleen Weatherhead and remember um, Mrs. Chedu and we pray that all will be well with them. That God would have guided the hands of the surgeons and for their recovery that by God's grace they will have, each of them will have a complete recovery. We pray for their families at this time who are concerned. May God still their hearts and give them every confidence and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as usual, we lift up all those who are in need today, families, where there is strife, where there is need for healing, children who are going astray, families unable to feed themselves and to provide for their young ones. 
those who are sick and suffering, especially our senior citizens who need care and support, for those who need medical attention and correct diagnosis. We pray for God's guidance of the physicians whom he has appointed, that they may lead those who are sick and suffering on the path to healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue with our prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.